Thank you all for being here. This is Central Elementary School's uh, kindergarten evening. My name is, or introduction to uh, kindergarten for incoming parents. Uh, my name is Chuck Donovan. Uh, I am the principal at Central, and I'd like to introduce Charles Chagong, who is our PTA president, and Alan Kissick, who is uh, one of our uh, school force representatives at Central. Um, they're going to be talking a bit later about the importance of PTA and school force for many great things that get to happen at Central. <clears throat> All right. Um, so welcome to Central Elementary School in Belmont Redwood Shore School District. Uh, as I said, my name's Chuck Donovan. Uh, I'm going to start with just a general uh, BRSSD overview with a few highlights of what some of the district-wide goals have been the last few years. Uh, in 1920, the aim was to work on fostering responsible global citizenship. Uh, in 20 and 21, we, we more so turned our efforts and focus to equitable outcomes. And this year, our focus is really on collective efficacy. So the idea that, you know, we've all been challenged by the pandemic in the last couple of years. How do we lean on each other and do the greatest work that that we can collectively as a group together um, to come back from what we've been dealing with the last couple of years and still to this day. Um, so just some general logistical basics about Central. Uh, so I am the lone administrator at Central, uh, but I, it all happens because I have an amazing staff that I get to lead. Um, so I have two wonderful front office staff, uh, Joan and Nancy, and we have a nurse. Um, uh, who we've just gotten a new nurse this week. His name is Marlon, and so uh, that's wonderful for us. Uh, we have three kindergarten teachers, or the magicians as I refer to them. I'll speak more to that in a minute. Uh, we have three first grade classrooms, three second grade uh, teachers, three third grade teachers, two and a half fourth grade, and two and a half fifth grade. And if you're wondering how a half class works, it's we have a combination class, which is half fourth grade, half fifth grade. Um, we have a part-time speech pathologist, a psychologist, and a guidance counselor. We have a staff of about 30 that can fluctuate with some more auxiliary staff and roughly 430 students. Um, so what do I love about Central? So I have, uh, I often describe that I won the administrator lottery by, uh, by uh, getting this job as the principal at Central. Um, I started in July and I have immediately fallen in love with it. It's really about the community and the staff. And, you know, I look no further than what we've experienced the last two weeks, which has put a lot of stress on the system and everything. And it's through the amazing community and the strong staff that we have that we've been able to weather it extremely well overall. Um, the community, it really is just a wonderful neighborhood community school, and you are all very lucky to be uh, coming into this incredible community. Um, I just, you know, can't say enough whether it's a, whether it's the supportive parents, whether it's the siblings and, you know, students that have been graduates for 20 years that still come back to Central. It is truly a special place. Um, and I couldn't be more proud to lead the staff. It is really an incredible top-notch staff that I just have the, the privilege and the pleasure to lead on a regular basis. And so while I've only been here about six months, I absolutely love Central and plan to stay for a long time. All right, so Central's mission statement um, is the following. Uh, we strive daily to cultivate a community of responsible learners who feel empowered to direct their own learning, inspired to be curious and engaged with their community, moved to show empathy and respect for others. We are committed to creating collaborative and innovative learning experiences through which students develop critical thinking skills, achieve or surpass the common core standards and develop lifelong learning habits and positive mindsets. Um, you know, I know there's a lot in there, but I just want to highlight a few things um, overall. Uh, kids that are empowered to direct their own learning. So while we often set the playing field or the parameters for their learning, we really try to build in choice and let students be the engine of their own learning because we know that their natural curiosity is gonna take them to ultimately where they wanna go. Um, 
really try to live and embody showing empathy and respect for others. And that's something that I try to work with the kids on every day in all my conversations with them. Um, again, collaborative and innovative learning experiences. Uh, you know, a lot of what we are preparing students for is navigating the world and the ability to work with a variety of different people. Uh, and one of the most important things is critical thinking skills. Um, we don't know what the job force is going to look like 20 to 30 years from now, but with critical thinking skills, they will Will be able to adapt and, and engage in whatever that workforce looks like 20 to 30 years from now. Um, so how does the central mission kind of dovetail with the kinder mission? Um, and so there's lots and lots of overlap, but one of the most important things is to focus on the whole child. If the child is happy, if they are healthy, they will do their best learning. So we focus on that, the whole child academically, emotionally, socially, and physically. Uh, we provide opportunities to play, and I would really call it constructive or directed play or constructive play, make social connections, become independent and responsible and explore their creativity. Um, we have tremendous academics at Central and BRSSD in general. Um, you know, those are always going to come. To me, what is super important is making sure that our kids are happy and healthy to be able to do their best learning because we know the academics will come, but it comes a lot easier if they are uh, happy at school. Um, so this is a little bit of a curriculum and general schedule overview for you. Um, so for kindergarten, their day starts from 825 and it ends at 130 in the afternoon. And that schedule is Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, Wednesdays are minimum days. And so kindergarten is there from 825 to 12. Uh, older to, or first to fifth grade is there from 825 to 1220. Um, on a typical day, uh, what will happen is that usually in the morning they will cover ELA, which we use Lucy Calkins Readers and Writers Workshop curriculum. Uh, they'll work on some math and we, for that we use our Houghton Mifflin Math Expressions curriculum and some phonics works, which is super kids. Um, they then go have a only kindergarten lunch and recess. And then after that, they typically work on some social studies uh, art and exploration time, some social emotional learning where we use our second step emotional um, curriculum and that's taught by the guidance counselor with support from the teacher and the teachers as well do their own social emotional lessons. Uh, and we are also a PBIS school which stands for positive behavior intervention system. And uh, we practice the dolphin way which is being safe, responsible and respectful. Um, you know, and one of the things I really like about PBIS for those who are new, new to it is that, you know, when I was growing up, you were just expected to do what you were told. And if you didn't, you got into trouble. What I love about this is that kids for just following the rules and doing what they're expected to do, they get acknowledged for that. And that really works and it goes a long way. And so we've been very successful with this system overall, et cetera. All right, so in talking to the magicians, this is how I refer to the kindergarten teachers. So they truly are magicians. So, you know, I sometimes will have to cover the kindergarten classrooms or I'll have to go, you know, there was one day that I brought them out for some extended recess and I tried to call them back in. Um, it was just chaos. They were all running around doing whatever they wanted to do. And I'm like, okay, kids, it's time to line up, come on over. And they're all just completely ignoring me doing what they, you know, just what they wanna do. And the kindergarten teacher, the magician, um, comes comes out and says, kindergarten lineup time, like this dog whistle in the appropriate tone or, you know, the right frequency for kindergartens and they all come flocking. And so I just was like, I don't know how you do it. I'm not sure how, how this works, but they are truly magicians. And so uh, it is really incredible what takes place in the arc of the kindergarten year. And it's only January and I'm already amazed at, you know, how they come in and how they leave. It reminds me a lot of, um, you know, I described Michelle Spadia, who's one of our great kindergarten teachers. They're all great. Uh, Michelle Green, as well as Candace Teamer. But um, she's been there 25 years. And I gave a speech earlier this year um, to reward or to uh, acknowledge her 25 years of service. And in that speech, I described kindergarten as being a little bit like where the wild things are where it starts off with the letting the wild rumpus begin. And then by the end of it, the kindergarten teachers have tamed all the, all the, all the wild beasts from where the wild things are. And so it's really amazing what happens. Um, it's great. And so um, 
here's a little bit in terms of my discussion with the magicians of how you can get your kid ready for kindergarten. Uh, one, practice the alphabet. Uh, two, and this is a huge one, but just practicing small chores and building independence, uh, things like dressing themselves, uh, doing their own seatbelt. We all really appreciate that. Um, you will learn about the central traffic pattern. Uh, lots of emails to come before the school year starts next year about how to best practice that, as well as packing their own backpacks and really remembering their backpacks and bringing it from point A to point B. Um, so how do I get to this amazing place? So there are two options for your registration. Uh, you can come to the in-person registration day, which is at Ralston Middle School on Ralston Ave on January 26th from 1.30 to 7 p.m. Or you can make an individual appointment on the district's website. Um, after that date, you will need to register your child or children at the district office. All right, so as I said at the beginning, we have an incredible community and a lot of that is made possible by our PTA and school force. Um, there's tons and tons of volunteer opportunities and frankly, we rely very heavily on our volunteers to do a lot of the great things that we do at Central and provide the great programs that we do. Um, some of the opportunities, and there's many more, but room parents, classroom support, yard duty supervision, yard duty supervision, and field trips and lots and lots of others. Uh, with that being said, I would like to turn it over to uh, our president or our PTA president, Charles Shigong, and Alan Kissick, who is our school force representative for Central. All right. Well, uh, welcome, everyone. You're entering a very exciting time, you know, coming into kindergarten. And I have to say that, um, of course, Chuck has to say good things about Central because he's the principal, right? But as someone that has uh, two kids that you know started at kindergarten and now are in second and third grade, it truly is an amazing school and you're entering into an amazing school district as well. Um, you're probably not familiar with School Force today. I'm here to represent School Force. Many of you are probably familiar with the PTA. You had it, you know, probably growing up. Um, unless you have a kiddo in the district already, you you probably don't know what School Force is. School Force is essentially uh, the education foundation that ultimately bridges the gap uh, between the basic school funding that the state provides and um, essentially, you know, what the school specific PTA, you know, provides as well. So while the PTA is really kind of focused on, um, you know, spending in the current year, we're actually focused more on next year and raising the funds to provide those critical gaps. I'm not going to step on uh, Charles's uh, shoes and, and, and tell you about the PTA's mission. I'll let him, you know, share that a little bit later. Um, but you can see it here for now. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And, um, you know, ultimately, you know, the, the School Force uh, Foundation is a fundraising organization, and we partner on a joint campaign with uh, the PTA to uh, raise funds, critical funds to bridge that gap that I was mentioning. And last year, or this year, uh, we raised over $3 million that we could invest into our school. And essentially, these funds, again, provide, you know, very critical uh, needs. Uh, bridging those gaps from um, you know, funding elementary art programs to uh, making sure that our libraries are open and full, providing that technology that's so important during these you know, times of the pandemic, um, PE programs, school counselors, field trips, assemblies, and, and so much more all together you know, through a campaign called the ECC. Uh, next slide, please. So ECC, what does that stand for? Well, it's the Education Commitment Campaign. Um, you know, we do this typically every fall. It's a partnership together again. It just makes it easier for uh, families to support this, this important school district uh, throughout the year. And together, we, you know, essentially support the students, our teachers, and the district uh, district-wide. And now in unity of our school community, I'll pass it over to Charles. Charles, over to you. Great, thank you, Alan. Hello, everyone, welcome. My name is Charles Shigong, and I serve this year as president of Central PTA. I wanna reiterate some of the things that Alan has just said about our partnership with School Force. It's a vital one that's really uh, important and critical towards helping our kids in school to improve their education and to improve 
uh, the lives for all teachers and staff as well. Uh, so with some of the things that uh, Schoolforce provides, it may raise some questions in your mind about what PTA funds. So on this little look, I can tell you that uh, PTA uh, provides for a lot of things that um, uh, your kids will definitely enjoy it. like field trips is one of them that's one of our biggest expenses on a year-to-year -year basis we also pay for assemblies we pay for school supplies this is a really good one because I know some parents are eager to um, go shopping in the summer with their kids and try to figure out what they may need and it can be a huge guessing game but at Central and at all the schools in our district our unit PTAs provide the funds needed for teachers to direct what school supplies each student will have upon entering. And that's not just for kindergartners, that's for uh, all kindergarten through fifth graders at Central. So that's a really uh, big thing that we can, that we do for them. Uh, another big thing that we spend money on a yearly basis is to provide for our teachers, our teachers an annual stipend. It is up to them to decide how they would like to best use these funds in their classroom. It avoids having them dip into their own pockets and allows them to perhaps get some, you know, nice things and decorations for the classroom to make it a warmer environment. Or it can also be used for little supplies in here and there that they may need in a pinch. And other times they've even used it to stock grade level books in their classroom so that kids will have extra things to read. So these are a list of some of the big ticket items that PTA pays for. Uh, community building is, of course, the big thing that part of our mission. I uh, just want to run down with you some of the big things that we like have done in the past and try to keep up uh, every, year to year. Discovery Day is the uh, one thing that I'll mention as a top item. This is a, a parent volunteer led uh, event held usually on the first Wednesday of May in the spring deep into the year where there are a number of distinct sort of laboratory lessons that are set up and led by uh, parents and they may do activities ranging from creating stop motion videos to programming robotics or playing with bubbles and film for a scientific uh, exploration. Uh, it's a really fun day on campus. Uh, it's something we've done for many years here at Central and hopefully it's something we'll be able to produce again later this spring. Uh, Holiday Craft Fair is also another annual favorite. This one is actually an event we most uh, recently uh, came to pass in December. Uh, we ran it this year outdoors in our in our in our areas between the classrooms and it was a wonderful time we had over 250 kids show up uh, again parent volunteers uh, leading different activities different little crafts so kids got to walk away with different kinds of uh, ornaments and little knickknacks that they could then gift wrap and give to a sibling or a parent and uh, they got to take it home and they just had a lot of fun time and moreover it became uh, an awesome opportunity for each of us parents who once again gather in person with each other, which uh, we, which uh, is something that we haven't done often enough over the last year. Uh, fun run and movie nights are also other kinds of uh, big uh, event productions that we like to put on that also helps to build community. Um, and we have other small events as well that I don't have listed, but the key thing is that we like to really uh, bring people together. And up until this point, I think, Everything I've mentioned about our PTA is pretty similar uh, uh, compared to other elementary schools in our district. So I promised myself that I try to put myself in your shoes and try to think about what I would want to hear because I know that I've gone to this presentation myself about six years ago uh, when my oldest was starting out in the district and I really had no idea what to expect. And a lot of my questions in my head kind of circulated around well, what kind of a community am I entering? I kind of have some idea of maybe the environment my child will go into, but I don't know who's gonna be there, what to expect. Uh, next slide, please, Chuck. So I just wanna lend you my perspective and experience uh, with my involvement in PTA. Uh, to me, Central PTA is an expression of our family's involvement with this school. And it's run on a currency that's not composed of how many dollars we raise and spend every year, but rather the time and attention that we pay. Um, I'm always amazed at how well parents know not only their children's friends, but also the classmates and siblings and sibling friends and everyone else. And that's been a really wonderful experience for me as a parent in this community, knowing that there are so many other people out there who care a lot about 
um, children that are not their own. And for me, I think that really builds a really strong sense of belonging and community that I think is uh, a very special part of being at Central. Um, I have two children. This is my sixth year at Central. My younger is a third grader. So I guess that sort of makes me kind of a veteran at the school. And I can tell you that um, in years past, most of the time and attention that was donated to our school was by what I call super moms. And these are like a small set of mothers who essentially live on campus and put all of the PTA activities and productions and volunteering work on their backs. And when I first started out several years ago, four to five years ago, and got more involved with PTA activities, I was, um, I was especially gratified that my contributions were made welcome um, and nobody questioned why a father was pitching in to help out so much it was just I wanted to help out and I wanted to learn more about Central and they gave me a great opportunity to do so and in the years that I've been here I've seen our school sort of evolve and I know that this era of super moms is sort of behind us and the vast majority of us parents are working parents and whether we are working 80 hours a week or we're just resting and investing, I want you to know that if you give your time and attention, um, that will always, we'll always have a welcoming space for you to do that. And I would like very much to be able to extend that courtesy to you as it was shown to me. Um, hopefully I've given you a little bit of an idea of uh, what we're about. Um, so with that, if you find yourself at Central this fall, uh, please be, uh, please, please feel free to look me up. My name again is Charles Chagong, and I'd be happy to answer any questions as a fellow parent. I know once you're at the school, you'll have many in mind. So thank you very much. All right, great. Big thank you to Charles and Alan. Uh, also a big thank you to Jerome Simon helping uh, support with the tech side of things today. Uh, we are gonna open up the chat for some questions if you have any. So we'll stay on for another five minutes or so and field some questions and then uh, everybody can enjoy the rest of the night. And the chat is now open. Thank you, Jerome. the Ralston location. I would have to look up the specific address, but it is near as you're, it is uh, near the top of the hill as you're heading up Ralston Avenue, but uh, let me pull up the address for you. Twenty six seventy five Ralston Avenue. Charles. Uh, the process for grade one entry is not the same. Um, so once they're in, uh, they're enrolled at Central, uh, then they are in with us. And so we will anticipate and place them in a first grade class accordingly, as long as they continue to be registered. But once you're registered, you don't unregister or anything or need to re-register each year. I can answer the application question if you want, Chuck. Please, thank you, Jerome. Um, so you would go ahead and complete the online application. So the application window did open on January 10th, um, but you still need to come in. You know, you can either do that at that registration day at Ralston that's coming up, or you could make an appointment at the district office. So it'll also be after the registration day at Ralston, there'll be about a two week period where they will have uh, walk-in times. Um, the appointment at the district office or at Ralston after is basically to turn in some of the required documents like a copy of a birth certificate, uh, you know, a cable bill, things like that, um, just for the verification purposes. So you have um, the application online and then you have the in-person meeting. The date is the 26th from 1.30 to 7, and I can plug that in the chat for you.
Giles, while you're doing that, we had a question earlier about aftercare programs. I, I put in a link to the, the aftercare program, um, well, programs throughout the district. And there is one on site uh, at Central um, that's listed there. There's also the footsteps program as well. Um, mm -hmm. That is another resource. Yep. Uh, yes, thank you. So there's a couple of aftercare and then we do have a few different schools as well. So there's Han Lin, which is a Mandarin, uh, a Mandarin school as well as Challenge School. And they're also um, affiliates that send vans to pick students up at Central. Um, we do only have one on-site aftercare program. And so if you are interested in that one, I would suggest signing up early because I know it typically has a long wait list and is uh, a pretty sought after uh, aftercare option. Uh, Alan and I both have sent our kids to the on-site one. I've just included the URL for that program in the chat. It's called afterschoolkids.net. It's an awesome name because it's called after school and sometimes it's kind of strange that way, but it is a great program. They have wonderful staff. My kids always love going there until they just got too old for it. So they don't go there anymore, but it was wonderful. And the really nice thing about it, of course, is that it is the only after care uh, facility that's located on site. So your kinder or first grader, whoever young and you have, will just get dismissed from their classroom and along with other kids who are grouped with them, walk the 50 feet over to the after school building, which is great. You're muted, Alan. I was just gonna say it's an incredible uh, opportunity for socialization and to make friends you know most of the time when the kiddos are at school they're focused on academic work maybe less so in kindergarten but later on um and you know they get to really get their socialization out you know at the aftercare program yep so they get to play they get to do homework they get to make things um all kinds of good stuff um i would highly recommend uh contacting them as soon as possible to see where you can get yourself uh, placed on the list. I'm, I mean, there's always a, a long list, but, you know, contact them. I don't know about specific dates, but as Charles said, yes, I would just get in touch with them immediately and just put your name on the list because, yeah, it can be a long one. Wait about another minute. Any questions? No problem. Happy to help. I'll also include the URL for the other or another very popular program, Footsteps. That's also uh, located on in Belmont, like um, I guess it's Barrick Park. That's the name of the park. Yeah, right? yep. The Barrick Community Center. Yeah. Yeah. So a bus or a little minivan comes every day to pick up your child from school and drive them along with everyone else to Footsteps. And, they get to spend their afternoons there. And I guess the only real difference is uh, it's offsite, which is nothing bad. It's just less convenient in a sense because then your kid has to get on a van. But everything I've heard about that place has also been top notch and great as well. So I just happen to have been lucky six years ago to get my kids onto the on site one. And, and you might be familiar with Footsteps um, because they do offer pre-K as well. So many of you might be making the transition from you know pre-K to kindergarten. And and if you're not familiar with them, uh, they also do summer care programs, out of care program, out of school programs as well. All right, folks. Well, big thank you again to Charles and Alan. Thank you for being here. Thank you to the audience for making the time to be here for your child's education. It's important. We appreciate you. So thank you all for being here. Have a wonderful night.